the Antichrist's ultimate goal is not to be a political leader. He has no interest in being a political leader. His goal is not to be a president, or a prime minister, or a governor. His goal is not to be a religious leader or a prophet of some sort. No, his goal is to be God. He wants to be viewed and worshipped and adored as God. This is what Satan and the Antichrist want, worship. They want exaltation to a place that only the Almighty God deserves. Daniel, one of the chief prophets of the Old Testament, also paints a portrait of a king with unquenchable arrogance. In Daniel 11.36, this ruler doesn't merely establish his own rules or lead as per his desires. He actively places himself above every deity, exalting himself and daring to speak marvelous things against the God of gods. This audacious attitude and the profane speech against the Most High is a trait consistent with the description in Thessalonians. The book of Revelation, with its vivid imagery, presents yet another perspective on this figure. In Revelation 13, 4-8, a beast arises, bestowed with power by the dragon. The dragon is Satan himself. And while this beast is a powerful political and military figure, who is able to make war with him, its defining feature is its blasphemous nature. Not only does the beast speak heresies against God, but it also receives worship, fulfilling the prophetic words of Thessalonians and Daniel. Here, we see the world enticed into worshipping the dragon and the beast, a direct counterfeit of the worship due to God. The common thread that binds these passages is the depiction of the Antichrist, not just as a political or military leader, but fundamentally as God, demanding the very worship that belongs exclusively to God. The Antichrist's agenda isn't just world domination, but a usurpation of the divine throne in the hearts of humanity. We as human beings tend to focus on clear, immediate problems. When the majority of people hear about the mark of the beast in Revelation, they often think about the clear problem of not being able to buy or sell without it, that we see in Revelation 13, 17. Revelation 13, 17, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. But if we focus on the inability of people being able to buy or sell without the mark, we're missing the bigger picture. The mark of the beast is not about buying or selling. The mark of the beast is not about the Antichrist controlling people like a dictator. It's really about loyalty and worship. While not being able to buy or sell is concerning, the bigger danger is what the mark means spiritually. Taking the mark shows that someone has chosen to worship the beast and the evil force behind it. In the world we live in there is no spiritual neutrality. There is no middle ground. You either worship Jesus Christ or the Antichrist. There is one Christ sitting on the throne of your heart. Either Jesus Christ or the Antichrist. What if I were to tell you that the issue surrounding the mark of the beast has already started? And unfortunately, most people don't see it yet. What if I were to tell you that the issue surrounding the mark of the beast started long before you and I were created?